I got to say, I've had an RT1900 AC in my network since I bought one right after we got the review unit. Mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. I mean, it's, it's great. I have noticed that if I push a lot of traffic at it, a lot of packets, I do start to see a little bit of little decrease. Dropping. So there's a bottleneck. But which when is, you say a lot, that's like way more than the average yeah, user, no, right? If an average user is pushing as much traffic as I, I'm pushing, they're doing it deliberately. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Just to mess up the router. Yeah, it's. But I mean, I did notice it, and it's like it's a higher end. You're talking about you know a two hundred dollar router. Mm -hmm. You kind of expect a bit more, which is why. I'm so happy what? that I got the 2600. Now, this was the review unit sent to us by Synology. I actually bought one of these because I wanted it now. <laughs> so it's replaced my 1900. I've got this, okay. it's, this has been purring away in my data center for about a month and a half now. And uh, I gotta say, man, it is, it is. Is it sweet? It is sweet. It works <laughs> just like the 1900, but I'm not seeing that slowdown when I'm pushing a lot of traffic. So obviously they've done a little bit of reworking. The, the processors are a tiny bit faster. It, it does look a lot like that 1900. I mean, the same basic shape, the same basic design. Um, it's got uh, four MIMO antennas, which uh, it's a nice way of saying multiple hey. in, multiple out. This is one clean. of those, those devices that allows you to um, you know, send multiple signals and then receive multiple signals so that you can, uh, you know, increase the bandwidth. You've got a lot of uh, vents for ventilation, so that's yeah, good. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're you're gonna be you're gonna be using them. This thing does. It's gonna pump. get hot. It's gonna get hot specifically because it does so much. There are so many features. And you want to go ahead and install the antennas? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. How about that? Nice. Sure, okay. We got um, something for hippo. <laughs> now, uh, let's run down this, the stats on this thing, because it is a pretty decent device. We're talking about a quad-core Qualcomm IP, is it a, a, a Q8065? It's a 1.7 gigahertz processor. Uh, it's faster than the 1 gigahertz Broadcom that we had in the original 1900. And, uh, and of course, if you go back to the overhead or the side side, this thing is, it is kind of large. <laughs> it's, don't don't it's expect to charge. It, yeah, yeah, I'd say like the 1900 is probably about that big. Yeah, yeah and a little, a little like, shorter, a little, little uh, lower. I've got 512 megabytes of DDR3 system memory in this thing, four gigabytes of flash. That's twice that of the RT1900 AC. The reason why that's important is the more memory I have, the the more overhead I have for running the apps because this has a bunch of plugins that I can turn on and I want to use them all. That's what I was going to say about the, the thing I like the most about the Synology is that all the software that comes with it, and if you've ever kind of cheaped out on a router yeah. like I did or used an older router, uh -huh. the software was the bane of my existence. You've got the 1900 HC, right? I do have yeah. the 1900 Isn't yeah. it nice? Oh, it's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, also, I've got to, on the back, I've got all the standard ports. So I've got my gigabit WAN port, and this does support two gigabit. I've also got four gigabit LAN ports. However, one of these can actually be reassigned as a secondary WAN port. Oh, this so is, if you had... Yes. Okay. So if you, if you had, say, cable and DSL, you could yeah. connect both of them, mostly for redundancy. If one goes right. down, it goes up on the other. But I can also... It's a form of bonding. I mean, I can't really bond unless I've got bonding on the other side as well. Right. But what it can do is it can look at which connection is least saturated, and the next connection that you make goes over, over that. Okay. It's, it's actually kind of cool. I really bonding. Like it. Yeah. James Bonding. Uh, also, I have the ability to, uh, with, with the interface, I can set certain devices to use a particular WAN. So I can say, hey, you know what? Everyone else in my house goes over DSL. <laughs> I get the fat cable pipe. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you can also do that in software, too, because I've set my yeah. Xbox to be the um, yep. where it gets all the bandwidth in case there's other things pulling on the network. Well, that's that's QoS, and that's what yeah. this supports, quality of service. So I can I can use QoS rules inside of this, yeah. uh, including like VLAN and the quality of service, in order to, to like segment the traffic the way that I want it. Right. Uh, this has also got one USB 3.0 port uh, right over here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Well, um, yeah, right there. And it's also got a USB 2.0 port. It's got an SD card reader. Oh, there's the, actually the USB 3. An SD card reader. So that uh, I'm, I thought this was kind of silly, but I've actually used it. I put a 64 gigabyte card in mm -hmm. my 1900, and that's all the storage I need for, for apps. Um, and then, of course, you've got that 4x4 MIMO antenna. Now, that's just the hardware. The wireless specs on this are actually very, very good. This is 802.11 ABG and AC. It's got dual and simultaneous radios at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Your maximum on the 2.4 gigahertz is about 800 megabits per second. The maximum on the 5 gigahertz mm -hmm. is 1.73 gigabits per Whoa. second. 
Yeah, that's uh, two by two wave two. If you're if you're an AC fan, uh, it also does beam forming, which is a nice way of saying it can use creative um, interference, so that I can actually talk to specific devices without spamming everything else. Right. Uh, the OS on this, as as you know, it's the same SRM that we've got on uh, the 1900 AC. If you know how to use their their uh, NAS products, mm -hmm. you'll feel very at home because it works the same way. I love the bandwidth monitoring. I love the QoS, the quotas, the access rules, so I could set like what time certain devices are allowed to connect to the internet. So if you're a parent, <laughs> this is great because I can say, hey, you know, my kids' uh, tablets, right. after 10 o'clock, they don't get to access the internet. That's super easy. It's, and right. We'll show that when we do the full review. I even like that you can dial it in and change so when the LEDs come yeah. on and off. Yeah. yeah, that's and actually that's really important because those blue LEDs really mess up your sleep. Yeah. And we're just figuring that out, but I mean, router manufacturers that have included that inside of this, mm -hmm. that's, that's forward looking. Right. The other thing I like, and this is the reason why I'm going with this, because if you go to the link there, Alex, this is not an inexpensive router, and this is 240 bucks. Okay. It's a fantastic way to spend 240 bucks, but the reason why I like it over some other routers that might cost 240 bucks is support. Right. Um, we've seen from D-Link, we've seen from Netgear, we've seen from a couple of other manufacturers that will sell, you know, pricey products. Right. And they haven't had their firmware updated in like five years. Right. I'm trying to think of, um, it was that Linksys one that we yeah. had that I really liked it as a router, but they had promised that they were going to do open source software they for it. Did. And they kind of like, like, eh. But they waited like two years they after it came out. waited a really out. long time. And that's where Synology uses their experience with the NAS market because they're mm -hmm. really good about updating anytime they have an issue or anytime they want to add features. Yeah. SRM is the same way. I, I mean, I updated the 1900 maybe five times last year. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's an automatic process. I don't have to flash anything. I just click upgrade and it goes. Yeah, well, I have mine set to auto update yeah. and I have it set to times when, like, I didn't even have to tell it. I just said, just do it for times where the, I don't use the internet. And it was like, oh, at three o'clock in the morning, you're not usually on, yeah. usually. And, and it will do updates around that time. And it'll send me an email too, like, hey, like, I'm going to update myself in about 10 minutes, just so you know. Um, one thing I, I forgot to ask, does it still have the buttons to turn on and off the Wi-Fi? Yeah, stuff? Uh, where is that? There, right there. Because I, I mean, that was something kind of new to me, that you could just be able to turn off the Wi-Fi without having just the See, physical we, button we to We used that. to have that. Yeah. That used to be a, a very common feature, and it kind of went away. Mm -hmm. And I like it because sometimes I don't want to go into, into the setup. I just want to you know, walk by the router and go, boop, Yeah. and it's off. Yeah, definitely. And it, you cannot turn it back on. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you do, it's off. It has yeah. been turned off. The other cool thing about this is, uh, like you, I, I have it set so it will update, but I don't want it to go until I tell it to go. It will send me a text on my oh. phone saying, hey, I just received an update. Yeah, and can you reply through the text? I or? could set it up to do that. I haven't. Oh, okay. I, I, I actually, but I, I have the app on my phone, so I can like, just log in and go, yeah, go ahead. Like, update is a go. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Dinner out is a go. You, you don't know the movie, but... <laughs> what movie is it? Spy Game. Uh, Robert Redford, Brad Pitt. Oh, I should go see it. I like Robert Redford. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> okay, but we understand that 240 bucks is a lot, so we wanted to give you a budget option. This is mm. what we went with. If you go ahead and show the, uh, the link here. This is actually fantastic. This is the uh, RTACRH13. It's a budget unit, but it's $70. Versus two hundred and forty dollars. So we're talking you know it's less than a third of the cost. You do take some performance hits, right. but I mean it is still a very, very good device. We're talking about a quad core Qualcomm. It's a one it's a seven hundred and seventeen megahertz. So it's not nearly as fast as the one in the Synology. Yeah. But also you're not gonna be dueling as nearly as much. In the Synology, I expect to be loading this up with apps. Right. With the Asus, this budget one, I'm basically only using it as a router. Okay, so which yeah. see, probably for general people this, it would be fine, because you, like you like to play I with like these. To take yeah. care, I like to play. <laughs> but it's got 128 megabytes of memory, it's got 128 megabytes of flash storage, it's got a gigabit WAN port, four gigabit LAN ports, it's got a USB 3.0, so a lot of the same expansions hmm. without all of the bells and whistles. On the wireless side, it's, it's also pretty capable, about half the speed of what you would get from the Synology. Uh, it does do dual band, so both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. It can do both at the same time. It does 2x2 two two MIMO instead of 4x4 four four MIMO, uh, which means that on a 2.4 gigahertz network, 
you're going to get about 400 megabit, megabits per second uh, max, mm -hmm. um, which is half the Synology. And on a 5 gigahertz, you're going to get 867 uh, megabits per second, which again is about half. Okay. Um, so yeah, slower, but yeah, I mean, a good. third the price. Yeah, and I think, um, so I realize Gregory, my little brother, is using a router that I bought when I was in my second oh. apartment or something like that. So it's like eight years old. Oh. And yeah, I, th I think I'm like, his birthday is this month. So maybe I'll pick that one up and give it to him. Uh, no? Don't do I that. I think you should buy the Synology. Yeah, and then give, and him, then give him my 1900. old 1900. <laughs> I could, I could. That's a lot of money, though. I, I know. I, I really like my 1900. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing that I like about this, uh, the Asus, is it just like the uh, the big boy. You can use it in bridge mode, or in uh, in repeater mode. Oh. So I mean, if you if if you're one of these people that likes to set up a, a wired network from a wireless network, that yeah. actually works really well. Hmm. So you've got two choices. You've got the 240 meg, uh, four, 240 megabyte, 240 dollar <laughs> Synology 2600, and you've got this uh, the uh, H13 from Asus. Right. Opposite ends of the spectrum as far as price is concerned. Uh, I will say, if you're thinking about a cheaper model, like some. Budget special from Best Buy. TP, TP Link is good. D Link is good. Netgear is kind of good, but I would never buy those. I don't know. Just like all the headaches I've had from buying a cheapy router. Yeah. Like it's just worth it to me not to. But well, when I when I know a company is going to keep updating their software, like I know with Synology, it means that nineteen hundred may have cost me two hundred dollars last year. This right. one may have cost me two hundred and some dollars this year. But I'm going to use these things for the next 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I, I was just wanted to look it up. It looks like some, the Synology RT1900, which is the one yeah, that I have, is, is 150 now. Yeah, so, that so it's gone down. 